uh, comics are stupid. No Harry Potter movie is good. You need this Snyder God. Oh, sorry. Just walk in front of you here. I'm gonna put my popcorn down. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna put this here. <laughs> Universal needs to sue Sony. Hey, I'm an idiot. I was fired from Fox. Let me go. <laughs> I'd like actually to see Venom just crush Spider Man. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Hollywood in Canada. Today we are joined by Jerry Cesaretti. Did I say that right? I feel like I butchered that. I'm so sorry. Close enough. <laughs> I'm so excited you're here today. Do you want to kind of you. introduce yourself a little bit? Talk about what you've kind of worked on? Oh, geez. Uh, uh... I'm uh, I'm uh, <laughs> Italian Canadian director. I've uh, been doing this for uh, for a little while. Done a bunch of features, a bunch of television series. Um, I guess the most recent thing that people would uh, know my work from is uh, I was um, uh, the original director on the first two seasons of uh, Schitt's Creek. Maybe uh, that that's going to ring a bell. Um, Lots of other stuff that some of which you've seen, some of which you haven't seen. <laughs> I'm just really thrilled and flattered to uh, to be on the program here. Thank you so much for coming on. So, I have to ask you this question because yeah. I have to ask everyone the same question. Yeah. Do you like superheroes? Do I like superheroes? Yeah. Do I like superheroes? Let's see now. <laughs> I love that answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> I can't. And for people go. listening to this who can't see, uh, do you want to explain what you just held up? I held up a, uh, a, a, a Spanish language copy of a Mark Miller written Superman issue that I just picked up in uh, Mexico City uh, last uh, last week. Uh, I have nine. Sorry, I have ten long boxes full of comic books downstairs in my house. Um, I've been collecting comic books for uh, a long time. Uh, uh, not just superhero stuff, uh, although my favorites are, you know, the Fantastic Four, um, but also indie comics and uh, uh, all kinds of things, yeah. Wow, that was like the best possible answer you could have given. <laughs> you were surprised to get it, right? I, I mean, I don't know what to expect anymore. It's very much a, like, whenever I ask this question, no. it's like a 50-50 chance. Oh, so. yeah. And I just finished re reading this. Ooh which is a really terrific book if anybody uh, is, uh, is a fan of Marvel's because uh, Douglas Wolk, uh, who, wrote, who uh, wrote this book, um, uh, was inspired by uh, the Marvel Universe a few years ago and how all the movies connect. And it made him remember that the whole idea behind the Marvel Cinematic Universe actually comes from the Marvel comic book universe, where in fact, all the superheroes knew each other. All the superheroes hung out together and fought each other because uh, they all lived in, in New York City. And uh, in 1962, when the Marvel comic book universe started, uh, it was the first one to have everybody bump into each other. So then he started thinking, well, if that's the case, maybe the 60 years worth of stories are actually connected. Maybe they're actually just one big story so through this book he takes us through every issue of every comic published by marvel since 1962 and he ties them together into one big story it's a really fun read oh no i'm gonna have to read a book now <laughs> you're gonna get me to read a book you gotta read a book man sorry you gotta you, you gotta get offline and read oh, a book no. that actually sounds yeah. so cool though I, that's like tough no it's actually very cool it's a real fun read it's a really fun read yeah now how did you get into directing? Like, what made you decide you want to be a director? Was there a big moment, or was it just a bunch of small things? Uh, there was actually a moment. What was the moment? There's actually it was a one, one big, you know, road to Damascus, uh, a moment. Which, if you read a book, you'd know the reference to a road <laughs> to Damascus. Where, when I was a kid, I was interested in painting or being a comic book artist, which is what I really wanted to do. 
And um, I really like movies a lot, but I wasn't mad about about movies. And when I started high school, and I was whatever I was, 13 years old, there was a, a friend of mine uh, who did like movies, and he had an old Super 8 camera. And uh, he asked me to help him one weekend with some other friends to uh, make, uh, make a movie. And I said, sure. So uh, I was over there. We were all doing what we had to do, putting up lights, pulling cable, whatever. And at one point, my friend was going to actually be in the shot. So he couldn't operate the camera anymore. So he asked me to do it. It was on a, it was on a, a tripod stand. And I said, sure, what do I do? He said, well, you look through here. This is how you focus it. This is the uh, button you press. I said, okay. So I did that. I looked through and I, I, I aimed it. And because I'd seen a lot of movies on television, I knew enough that I had to say the word action. So I said action. And he and somebody else walked into the frame and they started doing whatever the heck they were doing. And it was literally one of those moments where all the hair in the back of my neck stood up and, and my life changed. And I realized, oh my God, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life because this is a comic book panel that's moving. So it had everything that I was interested in, which was design, composition, image, texture, movement, um, and uh, kind of started from there. So I, now I've got to kind of jump a little bit of my questions because this is just too relevant to not ask now. Uh, how long yeah. did we get you to direct something superhero related? Uh, probably pretty soon because I'm actually writing a horror movie that uh, has superheroes in it. That hopefully I'll be uh, I'll be shooting within about a year and a half. I'm gonna have to drill you on that a little bit later because I'm gonna need some details. But okay. the other thing I have to ask you, just while we're talking about you yeah. kind of deciding, do you want it to direct? Was there a movie that inspired you? You know that made you say this is what i want to do and i'm saying movies specifically so you can't say comic books uh yeah sure it was the movie that inspired a lot of other directors uh, of my generation uh 2001 a space odyssey that was the movie that had hardly any dialogue in it that was uh full of images and mystery and composition and uh it was quite awe inspiring um, also, I saw it just a couple of years after. So there, there was still a Cinerama screen in Toronto, um, which is where I saw it. So it was just a gigantic curved screen, and you were just like sucked right into the whole, uh, into the whole thing. And uh, that kind of confirms where, uh, where my life was going to go. That's interesting. Yeah, Space Odyssey feels like yeah. the most common answer in terms of like, big, because it was such a big movie obviously yeah yeah that's why i said it's uh, a, a lot of other people quote that same movie you know uh uh you're not going to get that many directors saying it was napoleon dynamite even though that was a pretty cool film so so what's your favorite project you've actually worked on Ooh, there might be a couple um uh, Lives of the Saints, which was not a movie, but a, uh, a television miniseries might be, might be my favorite because it's one of my, one of the most personal things. Uh, I'm sure a lot of your, uh, um, a lot of your followers don't know what it is, but it was a trilogy of novels written by an Italian Canadian writer named Nino, uh, Nino Ricci. And these three novels told uh, an epic story about Italian immigrants coming to uh, Canada in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, specifically the relationship between a uh, brother and sister and kind of the, the, uh, the curse of the old world following them to the, to the, uh, to the new world. Um, and when I heard that some producer was going to turn it into a, uh, into a mini series, I fought really hard to uh, be invited to do it. And um, uh, I got the job and uh, I did everything I could to make it as personal as I, I could. And I filmed in Canada and I filmed in, in Italy where my family is from, which, you know, it's, it was, was a great thrill. And I got to work with some 
classic old school uh, movie stars like Sophia Loren uh, was in it. You're going to have to look up who she is. Um, uh, so that might be my favorite because it was so so personal because it had to do with me. It had to do with my family. I know my parents were impressed by it. Uh, um, yeah. Do you, have any, you said you had a few. Do you have any others that you want to talk a little bit about? Um, I also did a mini series about the uh, a biopic about uh, Pierre Trudeau, our current prime minister's father, which was which was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to do because I was given a lot of creative leeway to uh, to uh, to tell that story. Um, and uh, there was a romantic comedy, a feature called uh, Blame It's Girl that I did. That was a lot of fun, too, because I also like romantic comedies and we and um, um yeah well i'll leave it at that list okay so i'm gonna have to ask you a question now because you brought i wasn't gonna bring it up unless you brought it up and you did so now i can ask questions about it okay and that's the pure trudeau doc uh, like not documentary but like the biopic yeah um tell me a little bit i want to hear a little bit more about that and kind of the process the research involved because that's a very specific type of movie to make it's not necessarily you don't have all the creative license you may typically have with a movie. What's interesting about the story is that you're actually wrong in this particular case. Um, I did have a lot of a lot of license, uh, which has nothing to do with me. I'm not blowing my own horn or any or anyway. But um, here's here's how it came about. Um, Trudeau had died maybe the previous year. So it was quite recent. And I was at home and Wayne Grigsby, the producer and writer of the show, phoned me. And he said, I just left the CBC and we're going to do a four hour miniseries about the life of, uh, of Trudeau and, and we want you to direct it. And I just was bowled over and I went, oh my God, that's, thank you, that's terrific. Please, I can't wait to, 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 read, to read the script. And he said, there is no script. We just came up with the idea right now. <laughs> we're going we're to do it and they want you to direct it. And that's when I said, okay, hang on. I'm smelling a rat here. The, the idea of doing this is, is interesting, but if there's no script, that means there's no vision, that there's no take or there's no anything. And I said, um, but you guys all want me to do it. He said, yes. And I said, okay, I can picture the meeting now. You and your partner... I knew these guys from before. I had done some series work for them, and they were great, great writers, great producers, great guys. And so I can picture this meeting. There's you and your partner, and you're in the room with the four or five people from CBC, and you're talking about doing this uh, this show. Um, uh, and now you get to the part where you say, "Well, who's going to direct it?" And four names were mentioned in that room. Because these were the guys who are experts at history and political drama and everything. And I know this for a fact. And I also know that my name wasn't on that list because I'm not one of those guys. <laughs> because my reputation is doing weird stuff. I, do, I take real weird chances, even with the most um, staid and conservative subject matter. My visual style is very inventive and, and exploratory and wacky and weird. So if you guys are asking me to do it, it means you want to do something that's really weird and unusual. So if you're asking me to say yes without a script, it can only be because that's what. And, uh, and if that's not what you want, I can't do the other thing. And he said, you're exactly right. It's exactly what happened. <laughs> we don't want it to, this to look like anything else. <clears throat> we want you to do whatever you want to do with it. And I said, okay, on that basis, I'll say yes. So I waited a couple of months, and Wayne wrote a really excellent first draft, uh, but it was still very traditional. And and you know my admiration and respect and gratitude to him uh, will always be that he then gave me the script and said, "Here, do whatever you want to do with it." So we just interpreted the script in uh, in our in our own way. And then in the editing, we reinterpreted the material even more so. So it was a, it was a constantly evolving uh, uh, thing. So was there ever consultation with the Trudeau family or was there any, because I mean, I'm sure 
they had some, or I'm, I'm assuming at least they had some involvement in the process. They had no involvement. Well, first of all, <clears throat> Pierre was dead, so there was no way we we're going to get him to talk. Um, uh, Margaret was being a very private person, and she she gave us the approval, but she didn't want to be involved with, with, with whatsoever. And uh, the the two uh, the two sons were were again not uh, not interested. Now Wayne, many years before, many many years before, he became a screenwriter and producer. was a was a journalist, so he spent a lot of years on Capitol Hill. So he knew the family. He knew people around the family, connected with the family. So a lot of his stuff was not just book research. It was because he was there. He's an older guy, so he was there in the '60s and the '70s. So he had firsthand um, uh, a knowledge of a lot of that, uh, a lot of that stuff. And what we heard later on was that was that uh, the uh, the sons and Margaret quite uh, quite liked the uh, the film, which made me very happy. The idea was this: on day one of pre-production, when I had everybody gathered around me, uh, uh, I, uh, I said, "This is the, this is our mantra." <clears throat> Pierre Trudeau was a man who made the country go wow. So we have to make a movie that will make the country go wow. It has to equal his achievement, otherwise we're all wasting everybody's time. I love that so much. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're not directing, what do you kind of do in your free time? When I'm not directing, what am I doing? What do I do in my free time? <clears throat> Clearly I read a lot of comic books. And graphic novels. Um, <laughs> I watch movies. Um, spend time with my uh, with my uh, little daughter. I mean, I do it's, uh, just uh, just the normal just normal things. I draw sometimes. When I'm not working, that's uh, that's what I do. I cook. <laughs> I'm ter I'm not I'm not that interesting when I'm not actually doing anything. And even then, I'm not that interesting. <laughs> So you mentioned what you watch movies in your free time. Yeah. Do you, are you watching anything right now, TV shows or movies? Uh, yeah, what am I doing? I'm finishing up the Dahmer series. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, not of Dahmer, but of the uh, um, producer, because I, I love all the work that he, uh, that he does, like American Horror Story and The Watcher and things like that. Uh, Killing Eve uh, uh, just finished up the last, the latest season of uh, White Lotus. Um, um, this is Maisel, um, uh, Made for Love, which is a terrific, uh, terrific series. I think it got canceled after two seasons, which is too bad because it was really quite, quite cool. Um, uh, let's see, and then you know some of the comic book adaptations. Like I'm still iffy about Sandman. As I'm going through it, I I gave up on the Umbrella Factory, uh, I, I, uh, that that uh, kind of kind of uh, soured on me. Um, um, Doom Patrol, I quite like. Those are the those are the series that uh, that I'm watching. Yeah, the the Umbrella Academy was never. I don't know. I couldn't get him down. I honestly couldn't even get into Sandman, which sucks because I was excited about that one. Yeah, me too. Um, the comics were great. I bought them. You know. When I was younger and they were freshly coming out, they're they're fabulous. Yeah, no, I feel like Netflix and superheroes sometimes don't mix. No, they did a good well. job. They did a good job with uh, with Daredevil. Yeah, they did. They, those Marvel Netflix shows were actually amazing. I yeah. completely forgot they were Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> well, now they're moving over to Disney Plus. So exactly. Yeah, where I think I gave. Uh, uh, I gave She-Hulk uh, a, a few episodes. I don't hate it like everybody else did. That wasn't a real endorsement, though. <laughs> no, well, I, I haven't seen the whole season. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, I loved it. I'm like a full-on She-Hulk fan, and so this was amazing. Uh, well, I was, so a I, she show, but... I was a She-Hulk, uh, actually, I still am a She-Hulk uh, comic book fan. I got all the comics. From from the whole John Byrne run and everything that really sort of reinvented the character and made it interesting, you know, a lot of people were saying that they that they didn't like the uh, breaking the third wall and talking to the camera because it was a rip off of Fleabag, and I had to correct them and I say actually that's what made the comic book in the '90s popular was because as a comic book character she would talk to the reader. 
She was Deadpool before Deadpool. She was totally Deadpool before Deadpool. Exactly. People forget. Yeah. People don't, don't, don't realize. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you know what I've also got to ask you? What? I've got, I, I have, I've gone this long without asking you this. Marvel or DC, which one's better? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I have to ask. Marvel. Okay, good answer. Completely. Good answer. Well, see, when, 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 when I was a kid, when I was reading comic books in the, uh, in the old days, um, uh, I loved everything about Marvel because, well, you know, first of all, Stanley created this whole world where you felt you were you were part of it where the the, the comic book publication itself would, would talk to you and they credited the writers and the art and the artists so you knew they were individuals uh, uh creating this thing and then and then the art was always was always uh, uh, great and people were going through realistic uh, uh crises and and traumas and 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 the the uh, the hero superpowers seem to be more based in reality as well too. DC, the the uh, to me anyway. I'm speaking strictly to me because I know a lot of people love all the DC superheroes. Um, DC tended to be uh, a bit more fantastical. Um, they all also had uh, to me when I was a kid. I thought they were silly names like Element Lad, um, uh, uh, and. Uh, and I didn't, and I didn't like the art because the art was too polished. I liked the the uh, the, the roughness and the grandeur of the uh, you know the Jack Kirby inspired uh, art, of, even the Steve Ditko weirdness over at uh, at Marvel. But most of all, you know what it was most of all, it was the coloring. I hated the fact that that DC comics were colored brighter and for little kids. So bad guys would have an orange hat, an orange suit, and orange shoes. And I didn't like that because over at Marvel, the coloring was much more realistic. And I think that more than anything else kept me with, kept me a Marvel guy. So I'm assuming the Zack Snyder movies where the, there was no color at all and they're basically just gray and dark was much more appealing than the bright. You know, no, I'm not. I'm not a fan of the Zack of the Zack Snyder uh, Zack Snyder stuff. I'm also not not a fan of the um, of the Batman trilogy. Uh, that what's his name. Uh, did either uh, because look either you either you do a James Bond movie or you don't do a James Bond movie you know and, and as much as I love superheroes at the same time I I, I want that world to be um, a little stylized when it's that real I'm just kind of embarrassed for them because that because it's so real it just makes me think Seriously, you're a 35 year old rich guy running around with tights and a cape. Aren't you embarrassed to do this? It just looks kind of silly and goofy, you know. You, and can you and can you really sneak up, like in the the last the, the last film, The Batman? Right? There were so many close ups of those heavy hobnailed boots of his coming out of the shadows. Again, you're thinking like, can you really sneak up on anybody when you hear boom, boom, boom coming along? To me, the Batman that I loved really recently was uh, Gotham. That TV series was. That's an unpopular opinion, I think. I know, but I, to me, it was perfect. It was the right balance between stylization and real emotion. And I love how they handled the uh, evolution of the Joker in that series. That was perfect for me. You didn't, you didn't mind Batman was a child? Because he wasn't Batman. He was just a child. He was, he was, uh, he was Bruce Wayne. That's fair. The, the star of the show is, uh, was, uh, was Gordon, even before he was. He doesn't become the commissioner until the end. Have you seen the Alfred um, Batman's Butler series? I don't know. What they, they renamed something to include the word Batman now. So, uh, um, uh, Pennyworth. Yeah, they renamed I it, though, to like it. Alfred Batman's Butler or something, so you could add the word Batman to it. Yeah, because, because they're stupid enough to think that Batman fans don't know that Alfred's got a last name. Exactly. No, I haven't. I haven't seen it. Have you watched Krypton? No. Okay. Yeah. Any good? No. And then I'm not. No. I'm also not a huge DC fan in general. So yeah. you know, there might be a little bit of bias here, but uh huh. I just I feel like I also don't love the prequel stuff that they do in general. Like you know, Smallville was fine. Uh, Gotham was fine you know but they just were great i don't love that like let's make a super uh love superhero a kid and just do all that 
I don't know. Yeah. It just doesn't speak to me. So, now that we've kind of talked about that, what's your all-time favorite movie? My all-time favorite movie? I know, I'm just throwing out these heavy uh, questions. Probably... Um, it will. It might. It 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 might be a tie between uh, Billy Wilder's movie *The Apartment* and a Japanese movie by a director named uh, uh, Yasujiro Ozu called uh, *Tokyo Story*. Interesting. Why? Yeah. Because they're both great movies. They're both. They're both the um, the uh, uh, zenith of. Uh, of their uh, of their worlds, like the apartment is a is a great great example of the Hollywood filmmaking machine, and Ozu's uh, film is a great great example of uh, you know international art made by uh, by an individual given complete creative freedom. That's interesting. So now, what are you working on, and what projects are you currently working on? Um, I'm adapting a couple of, uh, a couple of, uh, uh projects. I'm, I'm, there's a, a Mexican Canadian author named uh, Silvia Moreno Garcia. She's from Vancouver. She specializes in fantasy and horror novels. Um, there's an early novel of hers called, uh, Signal to Noise, which I'm in the middle of, uh, turning into a, uh, an ongoing TV series right now. There's um, a comic book that I'm in development with on uh, Warner Brothers. Unfortunately, I cannot name it because there's going to be a big announcement at Comic-Con this year. Uh, it's a very prestigious uh, um, comic. Um, uh, not a superhero one, but a very, very prestigious comic. Um, and those are the two things that are high up on my list uh, for 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 television. And then there's the uh, the feature horror script, which I'm writing right now, which has superheroes in it. <laughs> so, how many details can you give me on that one on the on the script you're writing right now? None. None. Okay. <laughs> None. I can't give any details, that, except to say that it's that it's a that it's a horror movie that uh, that uh, uh, combines two of the things that I uh, I like most, which is comic books and superheroes and monsters. So. Oh, by the way, because you talk yes. about your love for horror and stuff, I have to ask you: Did yeah. you watch Werewolf by Night? No, that's on my list. I haven't had a chance to. I hear that pretty good. It's real. I loved it, and I'm not even a huge like horror monster fan, but I loved it. And right. I, I feel like that'd be exactly like your kind of thing. It's like the best of everything. Well, the um, the uh, the director is really talented, and I like uh, I like his work. So, yeah. Now, maybe this question will be a little bit, you know, because <laughs> you kind of were talking about the. Okay, I'm just gonna ask the question. We're gonna see what happens with sure. this one. Sure. Sure. Okay. Now, what if I told you you could create a dream project and you had an unlimited budget? What would your project be? Who would star in it? And I know, again, you know, you kind of talked about the script you're writing, but. Wow. My dream project. Yeah. My dream project. That's. That's tough. That's tough. I mean, everybody's got a dream project that they would that they would love to that they would love to do. Um, um, but for me, it, it wouldn't be like a cast of thousands kind of thing. It wouldn't be a period thing. Um, it wouldn't be. I, I don't even think it would be like a big science fiction thing or uh, or whatever. Um, um there's a there's a series of of novels um uh, called the Deptford trilogy uh, Canadian novels which would make a which would make a fantastic movie or mini series um uh, it might be a, a, adapting the Deptford trilogy um i don't know might be a western i love westerns who would you want to start um, 
in whatever project you choose. Wow. Okay, you know what I would do now that it's now that it's inspired me. Um, I would do a remake of uh, there's a great Canadian novel western called The Englishman's Boy, which again combines two of the things that I love, which is westerns and movies, the history of movies, because um, it has to do with uh, with uh, the old west. It's, it, it takes place in the in the early 30s, and it has to do with the old west and a uh, uh, an evil studio head who's trying to. Uh, 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 make a movie about an, uh, about an incident. So it flashes back and forth between like 1860 or something during uh, during a real life massacre and the 1930s when they're trying to make a movie about this. Um, it was a terrible television version of it made 15 years ago. Um, and I would get, you know something? I first wanted to do this a number of years ago and I thought I want to cast Kevin Costner as the evil studio head. And I had this idea when Costner was the hero of, you know, Waterworld and the Postman and stuff like that. And I told people, and, uh, you know, this is what I would love to do. This would be my, my, one of my dream projects. And they were like, well, Kevin Costner, you know, he always plays the hero or whatever, you know. And I said, no, I think this guy could play like an asshole. Um, of course, now, now he's playing an asshole in a modern day Western <laughs> TV. Uh, so I, I, I would still go after him. Interesting. Now, you know, you know, if there is a young person watching this who wants to become a director, right. And wants to go into the right. industry, what advice do you have for them as their starting point or as something you would want them to kind of remember as they pursued this? Here's the thing. I don't know if that question has any relevance anymore. Interesting. Because in the old days, by the old days, I mean right up until like 15 years ago, uh, getting, making, making a movie or, or doing something on film was really difficult. You needed a lot of money, you needed a lot of equipment, you needed a lot of help. Now you can rent a lens and stick it on your iPhone and make a movie for like 5,000 bucks you borrow from your parents. So the whole thing about what advice doesn't really matter anymore because anybody can, anybody can make a movie. Um, so there's no like trick, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Because advice only, what advice really means is, how do I get the people in charge to let me do it? That's what advice really means. And there are no longer people you need to let you do it. <clears throat> you can just do it. Success is a whole different question. That comes down to you, whether you got the talent, whether you have the heart, whether you got the brains, whether you got the instinct, you know. It's like the easiest thing in the world for the last 70 years has been for <clears throat> two or three young boys and girls to get some electric guitars and drums and put together a rock band, right? There's millions of those, but there's only been like, what, 30 really amazing bands. So just because everybody can do it doesn't mean everybody should do it. Doesn't mean everybody's going to be good at it, right? So it's the same thing. Anybody can, can, can grab their phone and a lens and get some friends and shoot a movie. It doesn't mean that suddenly the, the business is going to be overwhelmed by millions of... Uh, Writer, producer, director, auteurs. There's still only going to be a handful of people who are any really good at it, because they're the ones who are going to make something that other people want to see, and that's the key. That's 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 the key. It's not that you're getting other people to let you do it. Is to make something that other people say, "I want to see that," and nobody can give you any advice about that. That's just that's just up to up to you. You know, I mean, even Stanley Kubrick and Martin Scorsese have done stuff that nobody wants to say, you know, I mean, it's just, that's my advice. Just grab a camera and make a movie and then good luck. That's interesting. <laughs> this is the, one of the most interesting answers I've gotten to that question. So that's um, definitely food for thought. And again, I want to yeah. thank you for agreeing to come on. It was amazing. I was <laughs> shocked that you agreed. And I'm so happy you did. Uh, because well, thanks for asking me. It was great to talk to you, and your love for superheroes and comics was 
definitely refreshing and that was amazing. <laughs> Do you want to promote anything for the people watching? Anything you want the people to check out? Um, um, I was the producing director on a new Netflix TV series that we shot last year called My Life with the Walter Boys. It's based on a young adult novel. And it's going to be premiering next uh, May, I think, on Netflix. So tune into that. Perfect. And again, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, don't forget to you know do all the stuff. Subscribe, follow us on social media. And... Thank you again so much for coming on. It was really great. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. And we'll definitely talk again, especially after that Comic Con announcement, because <laughs> you know we'll I'm going to be getting you to come back to talk about that more when you can talk more freely about but it. But you, you got my contact info, so Absolutely. call anytime. And anytime you want to talk, you know, if you have something you want to promote, let me know and we can talk about it. Great. Thank Perfect. you so much. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching. Okay. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye bye.